Hello, my name is Stacy Harmon and I am an infectious diseases and antimicrobial stewardship pharmacist at St. Mary's Medical Center in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today I have the pleasure of reviewing data pertaining to the use of melatonin in SARS-CoV-2. For the remainder of this presentation, I will use both the terms SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. To define, SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes the clinical syndrome that I will refer to as COVID-19. Here you see a diagram that outlines the proposed mechanism that melatonin has in an infection caused by SARS-CoV-2. It should be noted that there is no evidence at this time to believe that melatonin has direct antiviral activity. When a patient's lungs are infected by SARS-CoV-2, an immune response is mounted. Very simply speaking, dendritic and epithelial cells will begin to produce pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, which will further activate the immune system through signaling pathways. Additionally, viral replication produces oxidized products, which may lead to oxidative stress and free radicals within the lungs. It is believed that in COVID-19, patients may reach a point where this immune response becomes uncontrolled, also known as cytokine storm. The culmination of these effects is where melatonin is proposed to have positive effect. We will review data that has shown a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines in patients who are taking melatonin. Based on these findings, it has been proposed that melatonin could play a role in preventing cytokine storm. Additionally, melatonin may function as a free radical scavenger in order to reduce oxidative stress on the lungs. Once a patient has entered cytokine storm and or acute respiratory distress syndrome, we often see further ramifications such as multiple organ dysfunction and an increased need for sedation due to mechanical ventilation, pain, and agitation. All of these may contribute to disruptions in sleep, which is another area that melatonin may play a role and in fact is already being used in clinical practice. As mentioned previously, melatonin has already been studied and is in use to prevent sleep disruption and delirium in hospitalized patients. Doses range among various studies, but the typical range is anywhere from 0.5 to 10 milligrams, and this may be titrated to response. While dosing in COVID-19 is largely unknown at this time, one case series which we will discuss further used a dosing range of 36 to 72 milligrams per day divided into four doses. Various reports have used even higher dosing schemes, such as one in which patients were given a 50 mg per kilogram dose preoperatively. In these patients, no serious adverse effects were noted, so this was encouraging to see that higher doses than current clinical practices may be safe. While no animal studies to date have used melatonin for SARS-CoV-2 specifically, here is a list of various viral infections that melatonin has been studied in. You can see that the effects in a few of these studies align with the proposed mechanisms that were reviewed earlier, specifically the reduction of pro-inflammatory cytokines, therefore potentially preventing or reducing a cytokine storm phenomenon. Additionally, other animal studies of various viral infections have seen decreases in mortality with the use of melatonin, but it is difficult to fully ascertain why this mortality reduction occurred. Various small studies have evaluated the use of melatonin in humans with regard to general inflammatory disease states. Again, melatonin has been associated with a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines in some of these groups, and mortality and clinical outcomes were reported to be improved in the melatonin groups compared to placebo in some of these studies. It should be noted that most of these had very small sample sizes, and doses across these studies were variable. The study which we would be most likely to compare to COVID-19 would be the adult sepsis cohort, but unfortunately, since this was a dose escalation study, full clinical outcomes were not reported. However, it is notable that this study used doses up to 100 mg per day, with no serious adverse effects reported. One case series describes the use of melatonin in patients with COVID-19 specifically. This was a retrospective descriptive case series of 10 patients who were hospitalized with confirmed or suspected SARS-CoV-2. None of the patients described here were mechanically ventilated at baseline, but most did require supplemental oxygen in some form. Additional reported baseline characteristics of the patients in this case series are described here. Notably, 7 of the 10 patients were confirmed positive for SARS-CoV-2. 
Although not clearly defined, one may deduce based on the reported patient characteristics that the Berlin criteria were used to define acute respiratory distress syndrome. So using these criteria and the available information in the article, it was determined that 60% of these patients were not classified as having acute respiratory distress syndrome, whereas 10% were classified as mild, and 30% were classified as moderate. All 10 of these patients did have at least one high-risk feature noted. These included age of 60 or greater, established cardiovascular disease, diabetes, hypertension, COPD, chronic kidney disease, asthma, or obesity. From a treatment perspective, the treating physicians were able to use any therapies available to them as they deemed appropriate. So it was reported that 100% of these patients did receive antibiotics, 90% received an antiviral, and 30% received an IL-6 inhibitor. Some outcomes that were highlighted in this case series were time to stabilization, which for these 10 patients was four to five days, and time to discharge, which for these 10 patients was an average of 8.6 days. The authors provided baseline data from 34 patients positive for SARS-CoV-2 who were admitted to the same hospital during the same time frame, but did not receive high-dose melatonin, and these were provided for a rough comparison. Among this cohort, they recorded a 35% mortality rate, and 21% of those patients required mechanical ventilation. On the other hand, no patients who received melatonin required mechanical ventilation at all throughout their stay, and all of them survived their hospital stay. Please keep in mind, however, that this was not designed as a true randomized trial, so it is difficult to claim that these differences in cohorts are due to melatonin alone. From this case series, the authors concluded that high-dose melatonin may have a role as an adjuvant therapy for COVID-19. Melatonin is considered to be a safe option, even in higher doses, as mentioned earlier in the case of 50 mg per kilogram doses, as well as the dose escalation study that neared 100 mg doses. Most side effects that are reported are mild and include dizziness, headache, nausea, and drowsiness. At this time, melatonin has no reported respiratory or hemodynamic effects. There are few known drug interactions of clinical significance to report, but something that might come up, especially in hospitalized patients, is that there is a potential for added drowsiness when used with other sedatives and opioids. There are also anecdotal reports that melatonin may have an added anticoagulant effect when used with other anticoagulants or antiplatelets, However, there is not widespread clinical data to support this claim at this time. Taking the limitations and in data into consideration while also considering the potential benefits, it may be reasonable to use melatonin when a sleep aid is needed in this patient population. If used, it would be reasonable to align the higher doses with the desired sleep schedule to avoid any disruption in circadian rhythm. We do not yet have enough data to determine the optimal dose for use in COVID-19, and it must be recognized that the highest dosage form available in the U.S. is a 10 milligram tablet. This will present some challenges with administration if higher doses are chosen. There are currently two recruiting studies and two other planned studies that aim to look at melatonin in COVID-19. As you can see, melatonin is being studied for both prophylaxis and treatment, as well as in the inpatient and outpatient settings, so it will be interesting to see the results of these various trials. In summary, melatonin is a potential option for adjuvant therapy in infections due to SARS-CoV-2 given its safety profile and accessibility. However, future randomized controlled trials are needed to fully elucidate its clinical benefit in the treatment of COVID-19. Thank you very much for watching, and please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you may have.